If you move east of Almaty towards the border with China, then in a few hours you can get to the foothills of central Tenshan, a giant mountain system located in Central Asia and spanning across the territory of five countries – Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, China, Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. The mountain system spans almost for 2,500 kilometers, with a maximum width of 700 kilometers. The Turkic word Tengri Tag is derived from two words, Tengri meaning sky and Tag meaning mountain. The sky mountains are considered to be one of the tallest mountains in the world. There are around 30 peaks with heights of over 6,000 meters and two peaks 7,000 meters in height. The main mountain in the Tianshan is the Pobedi Peak, which is 7,439 meters in height and is located at the border of China and Kyrgyzstan. And the most beautiful one is the Pyramid of the Han Tengri Peak, which is 7,010 meters in height and located at the border of Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. The first European explorer of Tianshan was Pyotr Petrovich Semyonov, who got the title of Tenshansky for his scientific work. In the middle of the 19th century, Semyonov Tenshansky came to the banks of the Lake Isukul and became the first European to see the mountain landscape from a distance. After spending his winter here, the scientist went on a horseback expedition deep into the mountain valley. And after two years, new geographic names appeared on the map. He made the first orographic scheme of this area in the form of a system of ranges, collected rock samples and studied the geological structure of the sky mountains. The highest mountain of the system, the Pobeda Peak, is located in the Koshaltau Ridge. In 1931 this mountain was visited by the participants of a scientific expedition led by Mikhail Pogrebetsky who reached the top of Hantengri together with Boris Turin and Franz Sauber. In 1938, three members of Letavets Moscow expedition climbed the highest point of the ridge, and in 1943, the topographic expedition of engineer Rapasov measured the peak's height, 7,439 meters. To celebrate the victory in the Great Patriotic War, it was named as the Peak Pobedi, which means victory. You can get to these mountains from Almaty in one day if you travel the majority of the way by car and then take a helicopter to the height of 4,000 meters, almost to the foothills of the 7,000 meter high peaks. The paved road leads from Almaty along the northernmost branch of the Tenshan, Transili Alatau. The villages are established one after another like some beads on a thread of the road, and beyond the town Shelek, which has a bridge over a river with the same name, the road turns right towards Horgos and Narankol. Every summer rock climbers who come here from around the world to the International Mountaineering Camp travel across this asphalt road to get to the top of one of Tenshan's 7,000 meter high peaks. The pyramid-like Han Peak, as it's called by mountaineers, drops on the north side and steep cliffs that can be seen from the road. But it is still far from the top of the 7000er. While in the valley, travelers pass the picturesque Kukpeg Gorge, ascend the pass with the same name, after which the road becomes totally straight. The distance from Almaty to the region's administrative center the town of Kagan is 245 kilometers. The town Narankol, located in the Rheinbeck district of the Almaty region, is the administrative center of the Narankol rural area. It is located at a height of 1,800 meters above sea level, 80 kilometers away from Kagan. The border with China is in hand's reach, and it is the end point where the travelers split. A rare type of tree, the red birch, grows around Narankol. Not many people know that Kazakhstan is the only place in the world where the red birch or Yarmolenko's birch tree grows. 
The groves form small spots between two rivers, Taques and Bayancol, and this is the only pleasant place for the red birch to grow. That is why plant biologists are working on restoring and preserving this rare kind of tree. And nature explorers prefer to spend their time under the trees, in the meadows full of field flowers. Adventure seekers continue to move deeper into the foothills of the Tan Shan, where en route to the zone of eternal snow, pine forests grow and harsh and loud mountain rivers block the way. Some people set their camps in the mixed forest in the Akkol Gorge, others choose the Bayankol Gorge, the most beautiful, pristine place with many kinds of animals, whose tracks you can see on the sand near the Bayankol River. This is the land of alpine valleys with rivers and lakes almost unknown to tourists, and only a few people manage to get here to see these beautiful places, where you forget about time and can sometimes meet geologists and shepherds. Mountain tourists like to come here to climb the mountain or trekking route, for instance to the Merzbacher Lake, which has been formed at the junction of the northern and southern Inilche glaciers. The mountaineers have a helicopter flight ahead of them to the place where the world has only three colors. And only in good weather, when the sky is blue, the glaciers of the mountains are white and the rocks are yellowish-brown. The peak Hantengri is a landmark of Kazakhstan, as well as one of the northernmost 7,000ers in the world. At sunset, its top made of marble rocks turns red, which is why the mountain got its name of Khantau, or Blood Mountain. The rise to the top is considered to be top tier, especially the northern slope, where only first-class mountaineer climbers set off on their expeditions and only those who can make it through technically complicated routes and withstand high altitudes. There are lots of marmots here. The animal population is divided into two groups. There are the plain marmots, the baibak, and the mountain marmots living in harsh conditions of the alpine zone, where the summer starts late and winter comes early. The marmots live in the area from the steppe flatlands to the top of the world. In Tibet, they are large and allow people to get very close to them. There are more marmots at the foothills of the Tanshan Mountains than in the Alpine area, which can be explained by the presence of humans. The factor of disturbance by shepherds herding their sheep in the green fields protects the animals from wolves. According to zoologists, the marmots form clear groups of several kinds within the squirrel family. They are relatively large, nice-looking animals with the weight of up to several kilograms and live in open areas. Marmots make holes. The structure of their settlements consists of families and colonies. The marmot's behavior, which includes constant communication and transmission of information between the members of the colony, plays an important role in the life of these rodents. When the marmots come outside of their holes for feeding, they spend around 30% of their on-ground activity on observing the area and their neighbors. When the marmots settle in the areas where grass quickly turns dry, like the Kazakhstan steppes, they start hibernation early and greatly reduce the total period of time of their activity on the surface. The females of Kazakhstan's Baibag deliver their offspring early, long before they come up to the surface in the spring, when the weather is still unstable and there's too little food for them. But by the time the little marmots come outside of their holes, the steppe is blossoming under the sun. They grow fast and gain fat quickly for the winter. And up in the mountains, the marmots that also have no adequate food in the spring due to the late growth of the plants have changed their food preferences and have adapted to using the underground parts of plants. Specialists call such behavior of marmots as labile, which helps them adapt to certain conditions of their living place.
The marmots' ancestral home is North America, from where they spread around the world. In Eurasia, most researchers distinguish eight kinds of marmots, three or four kinds united in the Baibak group, the steppe, forest steppe, gray or Mongolian marmot living in the white area of the steppes, and the mountains spanning from Ukraine in the west to the northwestern China in the east. The only purely European kind is the alpine marmot. The mountains of Central Asia have the men's beers marmot, long-tailed or red marmot, Himalayan marmot, and a separate northeastern kind, the black-capped marmot. Different kinds of marmots live separately in different geographical areas. They differ from each other in their behavior. Scientists distinguish the forest steppe, Alaskan, quarry, yellow-bellied, Olympic, and other marmots. They're all herbivores and hibernate in the winter time. The marmots living in the foothills of the Tenshan do not know that in the ancient times, this land was one of the branches of the Great Silk Road. The caravan road used to connect Eastern Asia with the Mediterranean in the ancient times and in the Middle Ages. It was mostly used to export silk from China. The road was established in the 2nd century BC and led from Xi'an to Lanzhou to Dunhuang, where it split in two roads. The northern road passes through Turfan, crossed Pamir, and led through the Fergana and Kazakh steppes. The southern road passed near Lake Lobnor along the south border of Taklamakan Desert, through Yarkent and Pamir, and led to the very Mediterranean Sea. The name for the caravan road was introduced by the German geographer Richthofen in 1877. Today, multiple tours are organized along different sections of the Great Silk Road. And the road from Amati to Horgos is a modern highway used for transporting goods from one country to another. From the valley where the Silk Road is located, you can see the mountain ranges. They are standing tall on the horizon, one after another, and get lost in the fog as the distance gets bigger. From the road, you can see the natural zones of the Tian Shan, which change in vertical belts, and which is the re direct result of the orographic scheme of the mountain ranges and their geographic position. In general, there are four levels of altitudinal belts, from the steppe spaces to the glaciers and alpine landscapes covered in eternal snow. The snow line in the Tan Shan starts at the height of 3200 to 3700 meters in the west to 4200 meters in the area of the Han Tangri. The Tan Shan has intensive glaciation. Its multiple glaciers reach significant length and thickness. For example, the glacier in Olchek is 65 kilometers long, Khaende is 28 kilometers long, Korzhenevsky 16 kilometers. Small leaved and pine forests grow in the medium altitudinal belt. Below are the foothills covered in grass and bushes. The lowest belt surrounding the intermountain plains and mountain foothills at the altitude around 600 to 800 meters above sea level show signs of desert, semi-desert and steppe zones. Higher up in the mountains, there are snow leopards and mountain goats. Eagles fly above the valleys between the mountains, and you can hear snowcocks among the rocks. The pine forests have lots of birds, and in the mixed forests, you can find aspens, the Tanshan ashberry, the honeyberry, larch, and the Siberian fir tree. Measured against the geological scale of time, this is a relatively young mountainous land with mountain forming processes still ongoing. Tectonic shifts and wind erosion create conditions for intense destruction of rocks and help to form wide and extended rock slides and moraines of different sizes, from small to giant piles of rocks. And this mountainous land is definitely worth the visit.